Creole banjo, first in a series of banjo history with George Gibson. The Kentucky Arts Council supported me in a year-long apprenticeship with George Gibson of Knott County. During my apprenticeship, I appreciated how much Mr. Gibson knew about banjo history, so I began a series of videos to share with folks interested in banjo and banjo history. This is the first in a series of videos concerning the banjo. My reading tells me that banjo-like instruments followed the trade routes from the Middle East across the Sub-Sahara and lodged in West Africa. There are many cousins of the banjo in West Africa, the Ngoni, the Zalem, to name just a couple. So many banjo-like instruments on the African continent. Which one may have been the closest cousin to the American banjo? Daniel Jada of Gambia was studying for an accounting degree in Atlanta, Georgia in 1970. He listened to American banjo playing, and it reminded him of his father's playing of the accounting, especially old-time banjo playing. Meanwhile, Ulf Jagfors of Sweden had long wondered about the banjo's history. He traveled and researched in West Africa for many years until he ran across Daniel Jata, and together they uncovered the connection between the accounting and the American banjo. The accounting has a floating bridge, a head made of hide, strings that attached at the bottom of the head, and a drone string halfway up the neck. The way it was played was also similar, an overhand style with the back of a fingernail and the thumb. The African drop thumb technique was almost identical to old-time banjo playing. Daniel presented his research at the Banjo Collectors Conference in Massachusetts in the year 2000. Thus began a journey to return the banjo to its roots and in a way to give it back to the people from which it came. In this first episode, George Gibson takes up the story of the banjo in Portuguese colonial West Africa along the Gambia River. Creole banjo, that is, how different cultures shared in the evolution of the banjo. Come join us in the journey. concept in regard to banjo and banjo history is creolization. A creolization occurs when two cultures, two different cultures meet and when they meet different forms of expression emerge in art and in other ways as well as language. Uh, the banjo is a creolized instrument. The uh, Portuguese were in Africa 150 years or more before the slave trade began. And Portuguese traders married or had unions with African women. And uh, the descendants of these unions are to call Luso Africans today. They defined race by religion and occupation rather than the color of one's skin. They all claim to be Portuguese. These people were adequately described by Jobson in 1721 when he sailed up the uh, Gambia River. They controlled most of the trade on the Gambia River. And he said, although many were as black as their African neighbors, they all claimed to be Portuguese and they were Christian. They were a large force in Africa. And Undoubtedly, the banjo developed among the descendants of these people who had seen Portuguese instruments as well as African instruments for 150 years before the slave trade started. There's abundant evidence that the banjo, the four-string banjo, originated in the Sierra Leone because there are some eyewitness descriptions of the 
banjo or a banjo-like instrument than C or Leon. And in the Caribbean, many observers noted that the uh, slave traders tried to bring African instruments with the slaves they had captured or traded for uh, to, to have a better climate on the ships. So they brought African instruments, not only to the Caribbean, but to the United States with slaves. So the banjo was a cre creolized instrument because it had a flat fingerboard and tuning pegs, whereas most African instruments had just a round stick for a neck. The flat fingerboard and tuning pegs came from European style instruments or Portuguese instruments. Now, some maintain it was developed in the Caribbean, but those people who maintain that are very ignorant of Af African history because these Luso Africans who claim to be uh, Christian and were traders and very important on the Western and in in West Africa. Uh, had seen Portuguese instruments for years. So undoubtedly that's where the uh, ban early banjo developed. It was a creolized instrument. Now some of the first slaves in the United States had to have been from this group, Luso Africans, who claimed to be Portuguese. Pete Seeger had to do an interview with the Banjo Newsletter, I believe in 1987, in which he commented on Kentucky music. He said in some way it has to be descended from West African music because of the tendency to play and sing a verse or two and then, then play a, a short line of verse. And often this short line of verse is not the melody itself, but something that plays around the melody. Little Birdie is a good example of that. So you had creolization of music in Africa, and then you had the same thing around the Chesapeake. When indentured servants and slaves were treated virtually the same, they ate together, they worked together, they ran away together, and unions were formed between African Americans and white female indentured servants. Indentured servants were brought from England to serve a period of time for the expense of bringing them to the United States, generally seven years. But they were treated like slaves. A lot of them ran away. Some of them ran away together with slaves. Uh, Joseph Doddridge wrote a great book about early colonial history, and he described a female indentured servant having her clothes stripped and, her, and whipped on her back until blood ran. So that gives you a good idea of how indentured servants were treated. Uh, indentured servants, when they won their freedom, mostly headed towards the frontier where some land was available. And of course, the unions between African Americans and white female indentured servants were in an anomalous position. As racism became more prevalent, they headed to the frontier. And the descendants of these unions formed the groups that were sort of separate, that had been described in various areas as Red Bones, Croatians, or in East Tennessee as Melangeans. But the, the Melangeans, uh, the two most common names were Gibson and Collins. And in Knott County in Kentucky, you had a lot of Gibson and Collinses who were a mixed race. And were the Gibson and Collinses where the banjo was very prevalent. Banjo was used quite often for dances in Knott County and surrounding counties. But of course, the banjo and fiddle was preferred if you could find a fiddler and banjo player to play together. But the result of creolization is we have a creolized music. Early on, the 
children of the unions between African Americans and, and white female indentured servants, they inherited folk arts from African Americans, including the banjo, and they inherited balladry and folk song from their Anglo-Celtic ancestors. So the two mixed, and I think this is where a strong tradition of uh, the banjo and fiddle being played together for dance originated among mixed race families. Now mixed race families own land, uh, traded genes with their neighbors as they moved west on the frontier, and you can trace the banjo if you follow the path followed by the mixed race people.